Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that he shows to join me today as we talk to Tiago over here. Uh, and uh, he's telling us about names. Is, uh, th did he actually? Yes, he, t he told us about names. Because um, I asked about his name, and I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Harry. I'm going to extend my hand for a greeting, even though he's up there. He's, he's just very far away. That's just the thing, Holmes, he says. None of that matters. He ignored your hand. His limbs are, um, are a mere shadow below the ceiling. So what are you doing here, I'm going to ask. This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness, he nods towards the ceiling. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circle it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days I'll be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Uh, who's this mother of silence you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, Essay. She's one who can't be painted or sculptured. She's a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. His adoration, says our electrochemistry, is beyond sexual. I didn't think it was sexual at all. Although, referring to her as a cavity might mean th that there's some allegory there at least maybe this cavity is something that no human form has oh maybe beyond sexual here doesn't actually me literally means beside <laughs> not beyond uh what will happen once you drink from this perforation i'm gonna ask i will be incinerated but not destroyed fine that's it it's called immolated then but it's the, the immolation still destroys you. Finally at one with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? Says our rhetoric. You know a thing or or few about that. Uh, do I? Do I now? I don't actually know what substitution behavior is. I think... It might be... Uh, his conversation has been related to alcoholism. I think it might have something to do with that. Uh, because addiction has a very strong behavior. Well, th not all types of addiction, but most types of addiction has a, have a very strong behavioral uh, component. Um, and that's why people who are, for example, trying to quit smoking, they they smoke, um, uh, or well, what's the word? The v vaping is a is a good way out because you still maintain the the behavior, but you don't maintain or don't necessarily maintain the substance that you consume and for alcohol maybe it's the same although yeah it, it might be probably is i wouldn't know uh you sure he didn't switch one drug for another i'm gonna say it's not like that at all man it's just faith and joyful service too gleeful though the those words says our drama he is lying not to you to his very own self I can proceed with these. Just faith and joyful service. Faith is a kind of drug, I'm gonna say. He shakes his head. I've heard that before, Way, and I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think when but think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? Hey, that's not what drugs have to be. You can Drink responsibly, you know. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm, it, and also that is a that that it, when you, when you make this sort of arguments, it's kind of complicated to use analogies like that uh, or metaphors in this case. Oh, and actually, this is a, an analogy. Um, but the, the point is, uh, it's it's difficult because you you can easily create unfair comparisons. Uh, you, you can, I'm sure, come up with. Um, a similar thing to a hangover and regretting what you did last night in relation to literally anything. You don't even need to think about faith, but certainly about faith or about uh, faith here is not used in the sense that it might be used. I think here it, uh, it might be used like in a more spiritually, let's say, hmm, I'm not very well equipped to talk about this, um, but 
spiritualism and faith are two different, distinct things. And the word faith itself gets thrown around in different contexts and mean different things. Specifically here, what he's, uh, what he's referring to is his spirituality. So we're talking about his spirituality uh, and his understanding of his own self as in relation to something that is outside of himself. And usually just I could say something greater, but that's not necessarily true for spirituality. You can have spirituality and be a spiritual person and uh, still be... Uh, <laughs> There's limitations to what I'm about to say, but still be a humanist at heart. Um, the humanism is very old school, and you probably shouldn't. You probably are not a humanist, but because humanism is anyway. Let's not go there, because then we can talk about history. And I'm not, again, even though I have some clues, I'm not the best person to talk about that. But the thing is, spirituality and faith are two distinct things. Specifically, if you're referring to faith as dogma, he doesn't seem to be referring to faith as dogma, though, and that's why I'm saying. That it is a kind of drug, but in the sense that, um, in the, not in the sense that, uh, I get the impression that here we're referring to drugs as just something that fucks you up, uh, and uh, and it, I that's not necessarily what I wanted my character to say. It could be what my character said, and I think it might be actually this might be canonically what our, our character says. Ah, faith, fuck faith, or something to that extent. Uh, but that's not what I said. That's not what I meant. Um, uh, it might be what I said or ended up saying, but that's not what I meant. What I meant just sort of... Because it affects your uh, way of um, being. And that's what drugs are. Because if it doesn't, then you don't... I mean... You you can't... You know, like aspirin doesn't affect your way of being. It is a drug, but we're talking about, obviously, the kind of drugs that do affect your way of... Not being as in the sense, you know, that you become a different being, but just in the sense that you you get affected by it. And that's that's the point of drugs, as far as I'm led to believe. Um, and if it is the point of alcohol, then that is also a problem. Uh, because alcohol is, you know, also, also has those effects and is also addictive and it's got all sorts of problems uh, related to that. Um, but then... Faith is also extremely addicting, uh, specifically if you and if you're talking about it from a spirituality standpoint, uh, which can be very deep or he can be very shallow, but it's still the same. The connection that you have to your faith as a person, and specifically if you are talking about spiritual faith, uh, is an I identity to yourself as a person. So that is why it is very. Uh, the, the, I was going to say there's a codependence there, but that isn't a codependence because codependence requires both ways. So it's just a dependence. You're dependent as a person uh, of your faith. So you need to process, like, if, you, if you're trying to quit, as it were, uh, or, or at least stop being as, as spiritual in whatever field, you, you, you need to process that as a, as a person rather than just being like, nah, I'm going to stop drinking, you know what I mean? Which, uh, which also has side effects and, and you know. So the the comparison does stay, but it's not like you can really draw too many conclusions from it. Let's see. Let's see what he says after that. There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. Why is that love? Love showed up. It wasn't here. This might actually um, narrow down who the heck our ex something was, uh, ex ex lover most likely, um, and we don't know who that was. I'm gonna say this though because this is obviously digging into our character. I think love might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hung over from it. He looks at you gravely. He says, she took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. I was being insensitive. Sorry. Let's move on. No worries, man. I know this shit takes time. Yeah, I still don't understand what you're doing in the church, though. I'm a seraph, Holmes actually don't know what that means. I sing the mother's glory. Is like is that like a seraphin? I that might be the English way of saying the word. I think I know what the word is. 
Can you sing for me? Sing for me something. I ain't from no Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is silent as the mother. He lost his cool there for a moment, says our composer. It seems you hit some nerve. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say, he says. I think I did some construction work here back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of church, of the church, was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since? The past is nothing to me now, way. It didn't belong to me. Right. I had other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. So you've been here for a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back, he responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? asks Kim. Not really, or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Okay then, thanks. So he's just gonna hang out over there. Well, let's do some uh, investigation ourselves, basically. A cracked pane of glass, colorful. That is obviously from the rosacea. Actually, that wouldn't be a rosacea. The, to the... that way. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window depicts a deer. Why did you do that, though? Why did you just center yourself over there? A me mask, banger's silk scarf for extra pain, uh, pain threshold. Speaking of pain threshold, didn't I need to have things that were better? Our empathy glasses. <laughs> empathy glass. It's the goofiest system ever. Um, instead of the tie. Is that good? Pain threshold. Yeah, maybe. If I'm gonna punch measure head one of these days. I'll wear that scarf. So, it is getting pretty late. I think Kim is about to leave us at uh, 11 in the night. A spider has begun its web, uh, has spun its web around this wood carved pillar. Let them be. We got shoes! Empathy shoes. Red brogs, or brogues, I, I don't know. These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white-on-white -white flower motive soon on the tongue. The toe caps, the toe caps are still dusty from lying in, in the church. So, basically, these are crocodile skin. No, these are all snake skin. Every shoe in this game is snake skin. I thought this were, these were crocodile. Uh, it's curious. And that's, that has to be like, these shoes, you can't wait for the snake to shed its skin. Uh, you need to kill the snake to get the skin, because that's how... The, the shadow, the uh, the shadow of a snake is not. Um... Oh, those those look pretty cool though. Uh, the shadow of a snake is not colorful, as far as I know. It's just a uh, little outer layer, and uh, it's also all stretched and all this sort of stuff. So, snakes in my feet, on my feet, I suppose, or my feet are in the snakes. That's that's how it is. A portable Harman Wauchi tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? I'm gonna bring the volume up. That's wind, I believe, on the left side. I was hearing it when we were talking to Tiago back there. But I was hearing it on the right side. Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. There's an antenna? Is this thing? A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer, says the lieutenant, stepping closer. And this time it's already turned on, he seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful, that's what he thinks. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yeah, but this machine looks just like the one in doomed, in the doomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the REM Civic. This is the REM 
Prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a REM-compatible interim printer. Let's just investigate it. I'm going to step behind the computer. You see vi Virusent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. I'm going to look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says in a black marker, Log February, I believe, through March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. And I do. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Oh, no. How is this connected, though? Do you know what we're about to hear? No, it's not her. Remember the lady that we met when... Well, we didn't meet, but heard in a, a wax cylinder, I believe. Uh, that's what I thought uh, was going to happen. The one in the when we rang that doorbell right at the beginning of the game. Anyway, she says, Good evening, Fortress Accident and St. Brune. On St. Brune, this is the East Insel Indian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed central area. Um, is this the personal log? I looked inside the core, but the tape on the filament just said log February through March. Good, please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer, says Kim. Maybe he knows something, the lieutenant nods towards Tiago. Um, I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fortress accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, thanks, but I'm finished with this call. St sleep well, Fortress accident, she says as her voice disappears into a whirl of static. The machine's keyboard is still illuminating, illuminated, revealing virescent play and print buttons. Let's press print, nothing happens. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, I have no idea what the print would even be. I think there might be a reference to, I said it before, I'm pretty sure. I think that might be a reference to a real life computer that had a play and print button because computer programs used to be loaded in ta magnetic tapes. And uh, I think after that came magnetic disks. And then after that, hmm. I know there were there were magnetic discs. Oh hey, wait. There's coffee in the back. Oh wait, I'm in the mother's love. Oh look at the way. Uh he says <laughs> there's many ways, dude. Uh he meant wait. Oh wait, I meant the mother's love is what he says. Uh which is funny because just the other day I was playing Overwatch and uh there was this Brazilian person playing with me and he said waitchi when he meant wait. I mean, he said, wait, he just said with a Brazilian accent. And I was like, oh, that's a cool detail that I never thought about. Uh, that, you know, because I'm sure it sounds like a different word to an English speaker. I mean, if you know the accent, if you, you, you can guess, right? You can get like way is a fun, it's a different word from wait. But if you know you're talking to a Spanish speaker, you know the way might be wait. Uh, but anyway, have you by any chance heard uh, Viajita say the password to a radio computer? Too many times I say, you need it for something? Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety, says our drama. Um, sure. I'm doing a survey of passwords and passcodes, identifying regional trends in the interests of public safety, of course. Don't sweat it, Vato. A password is after life death. That is true, says our Inland Empire with a challenging success. But what comes after death? Oh, wait. <laughs> That's, uh... Uh, I see what our Inland Empire is saying. Not true that the password is the, that one, but rather that afterlife coma death is true. Without the coma, that sentence doesn't make sense. What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity la nihilista pequeña when I hear it, he says. 
Um, that's the that would be the other way around. Pequeña nihilista, because adjectives can come after the noun in English in uh, in Spanish. This is just Spanish, uh, and in Portuguese as well, but usually come before. So. No, wait. That's correct. That is correct. It's the other way around. They can come before. How do I... How did I mix that up? That doesn't sound... Oh, I know why I mixed it up. I think in Spanish it would be more common to say La Pequeña Ni Lista. I, in Portuguese it definitely is more common, but there are exceptions. These are... And the, this is one exception where we tend to have the adjective before the noun rather than after. Because in English you don't say the little nihilist or nihilist. Uh, the A at the end denotes that, and the La at the beginning as well, denotes that it's a feminine version of the, the word nihilist, or nihilist, or however it's pronounced. But um, but you'd say the little nihil nihilist. You can't say the nihilist little, because that doesn't make any sense. But in, in Portuguese and in Spanish, you can switch those around. And there are some words that you, in, that you usually say before, whereas uh, most words you say after, or most uh, adjectives you say after the noun. Uh, and little, pequeña, pequena, uh, some words are usually said before, and uh, I, I, I figure only a person who is used to speaking the language would know it from just, um, from, just uh, from trying to translate it. So this is actually, yeah, Portuguese and Spanish, are, they are not easy languages to learn. <laughs> uh, and, I, and again, I don't know if that is what I'm saying is the case for Spanish, uh, but it is the case for Portuguese. Uh, the thing is... And since I'm rambling, because I ramble about all the things, the thing is, it actually means different things, which is sort of funny. But it doesn't mean different things, it sort of implies different things. If you say, la nihilista pequeña, um, you're referring to the, ni n the nihilist that is small, because there's other nihilists that are not small. And then you say, la nihilista pequeña. But if you're referring to a nihilist, just one in particular, that is small, like, you know, this is, because we're referring to uh, a sp one single person, and she's the only nihilist that he's referring to, that he thinks of, in this case, as far as we know, you you, you usually say the other way around. And it's sort of funny that it, it changes the meaning if you refer it, uh, the, the, if you invert the order of the words. Um, but that's just, you know, that's not even, like, what I'm saying is not a grammar rule. It, you don't learn it in school to say like that. It's just how usual, uh, people usually speak. At least in Portuguese, that is how they speak. Uh, it just sort of focuses more... I think it's because the last... Uh, basically, the last word is the one that that is the more important one. Uh, and so if you say that la nihilista pequeña, then you sort of... It's the little one. It's the the, the pequeña one instead of being the other. Uh, and whereas if you say it the other way around, it's the nihilista, uh, which would be, you know, that's a definition of what she is. I think we're done here, Essay. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation, says Kim. He's not referring to my ramble, by the way. He's referring to specifically the other Tiago's ramble. However, I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. No, don't worry, Kim. Don't worry about it. We're not going to find our suspect here. I mean, maybe we are. It's not like... I can tell. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on empty. Spinning on empty? Oh, it means they don't have tape? I don't I don't know what that means. Let's play. Uh, let's try this again. I think I may have the right password for the personal log. Good. Please repeat the password. After life, uh, life, death. Good. I've unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Um, so fortress accident, like the one in the doomed commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on St. Brune and the other on Rue de St. Guislaume. St. Brune, says Kim. That's the church. The lieutenant gestures around him. And Rue de St. Guislaume... That's the doomed commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Um, yeah, that's that's it. I'm not going to pretend that I don't understand what a computer is. Oh, no, I have to pay, play print. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Well. I don't want to read it without checking this, though. Because I think if I read that, 
I might unlock something. In white, silver, and apricot, faience, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad, a dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day, says our encyclopedia. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. No. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snow drifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you, as if under a microscope. No, I am not your bug. As the bitter thought passes through your head, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross. I would like to meet the other crosses. I mean, actually... I was going to say I would like to meet the other crosses that are not X-shaped. Crosses are typically just a, a pole. Uh, because cross doesn't actually mean what we say as cross, or at least historically speaking, it doesn't. It's the literal... Um, torture device, um, an execution device as well, um, then usually it's it's just a simple pole and pre people are crucified on the cross, which in the cross is, is a, an actual just the pole. Uh, the the, the um, St. Peter's Cross, I believe. It, no, St. Peter's Cross is the one with a thing, isn't it? With a circle around it. Uh, there's multiple types of cross. There's the one that is uh, just the T. There's the one that is actually that, that the beam, the horizontal beam, Kind of crosses the uh, the vertical beam. There's another one with a, a lower beam uh, that can be either horizontal or sideways. Um, there's definitely the the one that's just an X, um, but uh, th th there's multiple types. And um, he just draws an X, <laughs> an X shaped cross. He's <laughs> anyway from shoulder to shoulder. Oh, he's doing the crucy thingy, right? He's uh, I don't know the name of that. Um, with three fingers, apparently. That is a detail that, that we t can tell. I'm, doing, I'm not doing that cross either. Good call. She left us all in the shits. Don't give her a single thing. Just stand there in the apricot-colored light of the window, secretly grinding your teeth. The woman smiles, her distant smile, unmoved, struck in half by the crack in the glass. And we have some very high likelihood checks over here. But uh, we don't have time to do them, which we are going to do them, but next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.